The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. It's Jobs Friday. We got 216,000, quite a number to the top line. You have some revisions to the prior month, 77,000, I think, on the downside. So not as quite as a strong number as that big number for December may indicate. But wages are hot. We got a little bit of market volatility this morning. You spiked down to 47.02. The first move is always not the move that lasts sometimes. We'll see where we go today. But nonetheless, you get the markets actually higher than where we came into that number. Great numbers for the health of the economy. The worry, of course, is price stability. Okay? If we didn't have inflation, you always want extreme wage growth. You want as many jobs as you can add. I mean, if we didn't have inflation, you would want 15% wage growth. Right? Nonetheless, uh, I'm, I'm deviating a bit. But the worry here is inflation. The worry is about inflation impacting the Fed's path of interest rate cuts that might be happening March. And it looks like that might not be the case in March. Maybe it's the timing of things, but we're getting a little bit of volatility in both directions, man. The 10-year just spiked to 111.06. We're back to 111.18 right now. That is putting your 10-year yield right now at, where are we, 405 and it was quite a spike when we got down to 111.06, 4.05, right? Remember how wrong this market has been so many times over the last three years, folks, okay? We were just trading at a price level of the 10-year at 113.12. You got down this morning to 111.06. In the context of the move that we've had, okay, it's a healthy pullback. You can't deny it, right? A 382 gets you to the 110 area. That's kind of an area that acted as an area of support, also acted as an area of resistance back in, whether it's July, August, September as well. Important to think, keep things in context, but as we go around the market wrap-up, we go back to a five-minute. You see the S&P is now higher than when we were coming into that number. The Dow, only off by 19 points. You make it down. Dow's almost 100 points off of the spike low at 830. Excuse me, that was the NASDAQ 100. Excuse me, NASDAQ 100 is 100 points off of the low that we had this morning. You got the Dow 150 points off of the low they had this morning. 37,504 was the spike low. The Russell, look at that Russell, man. The Russell at one point was down, what, almost 2%. Almost 2%. The Russell, man, you want some volatility. Um, hang out with the Russell for a while. Bitcoin, not quite as much volatility as the market this morning, down by 300 dollars right now at 44295 you have crude catching a little bit of a bid okay crude up a buck 57 at 7375 right now you jump over to the gold contract flat at 2050 you did see a spike down to 2030 now what is that correlating with that's correlating with yields and the dollar you initially had dollar strength up to 10310 that would have put some weakness in gold you have a pullback now to actually below where we were Pretty remarkable the move we're getting right now, man. Uh, if we were going to have higher yield, you would have dollar strength, right? So what happened? We had an initial spike where yields were higher. The dollar spiked. The market pulled back. And we've basically given up all of that over the last 40 minutes since we got that number at 8.30 in the morning with U.S. payrolls increasing by 216000 for the month of December. And, yeah, we had net revisions, We did. So November was downwardly revised, and you had October revised lower as well. October was revised lower by 45,000 jobs, and November was revised lower as well. So we got a hot number, and yeah, the market is taking it and running with it. So 2023 job gains, because this was the last month. 2.7 million jobs created in 2023. Almost 3 million jobs created. Unemployment rate, 3.7%, man. Um, 
man. So we got 4.8 million jobs in 2022, and that was at about 399,000 a month. You average it out. And we got 225,000 in 2023. Uh, excuse me. We get 2.7 million for an average of 225,000. Here, I'll just pull over the statistics from CNN. When you check it out, I mean, these are the last two years, right? Doesn't quite compare to the beginning of 2022 when we were getting back so many of those COVID jobs lost when we went 364, 904, 414. We had a number of 568 in July of 2022. January of this year, we had 472, but you see, nonetheless, higher numbers. But what is important to note here, do you see these two prior numbers, October and November? Those were downwardly revised. Nothing preventing this number from being a little downwardly revised as well. So... You know, we get revisions. That is for sure. So you got 52,000 in government jobs, 38,000 in healthcare related fields such as ambulatory healthcare services and hospitals, leisure and hospitality, 40,000. Transportation and warehousing saw a loss of 23,000. Yeah, and when you talk about wages, okay, this is going to be probably the biggest conversation that comes out today. Average hourly earnings, 0.4% on the month. 4.1% from a year ago, both higher than the estimates. Not what you want to hear if you're looking at inflation, right? If you're looking at the economy, it's great. But what are the two Fed mandates? The two Federal Reserve mandates are full employment. We're at 3.7%, folks, and price stability, which is the one that they need to focus on right now. Probably price stability. And what do we have? We have earnings at 4.1%, which is a hotter number than you were expecting, up from 4% in November, back to where we were in October. And for some context here, folks, okay, wages were still going up 4.3% all the way back in March of this year. So not exactly huge strides made on the wages. That's going to be a lag that's potentially going to be a thorn in Chairman Powell's side as they try and get out um, of their Fed hiking cycle. And we'll see if March comes, and we'll see where the... The data goes today in terms of the buying, the selling, supply and demand, and where we end up. But nonetheless, you get the tenure off about 15 ticks right now. I'm going to jump to the yield curve a bit. We take a look up and down the curve. <clears throat> you got higher numbers up and down the curve. The two-year, up about five basis points. So we're pointing to higher yields here, right? Barely, but we're still pointing to higher yields. Um, but no real huge moves. Right? You're talking about six basis points from the two-year upwards. You look at the one-year, you're only four basis points up. The six-year, basically unchanged, one basis point. So it's going to be an interesting Friday in terms of where the market anticipates this number. It is January 5th right now, folks. We have the first Fed cut, the market is thinking, is potentially about two months away. About ten weeks away is where they're thinking that cut might be on March 20th. And we get one meeting schedule uh, ahead of that, and that is at the end of this year. And that is January 30th, 31st, so last day of the year, Wednesday, January 31st. That's a Federal Reserve meeting. Then you got to go through all of February and half of March, more than that, till March 20th. That's when you get the next meeting. It sure is. Yep, March March 20th is the meeting, January 31st, and on that March 20th meeting, you get the uh, summary of economic projections. Don't get that in January. Stay tuned, folks. We'll take a look at some of those jobs numbers when we get back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. By two, pretty remarkable. If this is going to be the data that catches a bid, uh, Yields, again, at about 4.05% on the 10-year. You take a look at the S&Ps, man. We are 25 points off of the spike low of 47.02, right on the heels of that jobs number at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. NASDAQ 100, you're only negative by single digits, man. All the markets are above where you were coming into that number. The Russell, barely. Okay, Russell makes it back to about the 1965 area. You trade down to 1938. You get it all back. We've seen a similar move. It's not just in equities. In yields, we saw the 10-year spike from 112.23 down to one. Excuse me, 111.23 down to 111.06. We're back to 111.18. It's going to be an interesting Friday in terms of how the market anticipates this data. You got the odds for a cut. Got to recalibrate my brain to talk about cuts versus hikes. The odds for a cut in the March meeting, now under 60%. We were at 84% or something like that only a week ago. We were at 60-something percent yesterday. We're at 50-something percent now today. You have to pay attention to yields a bit. Yes, we've recalibrated, but boy, there are some interesting numbers. Wages are a big problem that have persisted on the inflation front, and they're a big problem in this report. And the other thing you have is people leaving the workforce, okay? When you hear 3.7% unemployment, what's it mean? It means um, we are very healthy right now in terms of if you want a job, you can probably go get a job. Now, you can transition that conversation to the quality of the jobs that people get nowadays. And I would argue that we're at historic unemployment rates, but many times that job is not the same level of quality that many jobs in many decades of the past used to encompass in terms of what they provided, the wages, the benefits, etc. Nowadays, um, you might have a job, but you might need to, and you still might be go on government assistance to get by. So keep that in mind as you look at the health of the economy and that number. But jumping back, taking a look at the amount of people that stepped out of the job force yeah a drop in labor force participation okay now this is uh bloomberg economics and this is just some of their live feed folks as they break down the numbers some great different summaries of some of their analysts over at bloomberg the unemployment rate stayed at 3.7 percent this is bloomberg economics chief u.s economist anna wong but for the wrong reasons okay so pay attention to these parts of it 
a drop in the labor force participation. The Fed wants to see labor supply increase, right? What do you want? You want there to be stresses on the economy to the point where companies do not think they have the ability to raise prices and therefore people need to work. Okay, it all kind of it's all part of one cohesive economy, right? They're all related to a certain degree. That would provide wage disinflation. But if people are leaving the workforce, okay, then what's going to happen? It's going to be more difficult to get wage disinflation because you have the unemployment rate sinking for the wrong reasons, okay? You have the unemployment rate sinking because people are leaving the labor force. Not exactly what you want to see. Um, yeah, and what was the number? It was a, There it was. That's what I was looking at. 845,000 people left the labor force in December. Say what? The market's loving the fact that we gained 216,000 jobs, but we had 845,000 leave the labor force in December. In other words, they were no longer working or looking for work. That is why the participation rate slid 0.3 percentage points, the biggest drop since January of 2021. This is a senior editor at Bloomberg, and he says, I basically don't know why that's happening, and we'll see whether economists can come up with an explanation. But remember, folks, people have been magnificently wrong for an extended period of time. And this is an important fact of what's going on. It's an important fact that's driving unemployment rate. And it's an important fact that will make it more difficult for those wages to come down. And if everybody's getting 4% wages, you might see those companies raising prices because they might have the ability to. And that's the way business works, man. If you can sell a product for X dollars... Well, why not sell it for X dollars plus a 4% rise every year if you can? The only reason people don't jack up the price of their products, folks, is because they think that they won't be able to sell them versus the competition, etc. And that has not been the case recently at all, right? Yeah, upside in wages, you see a lot of that. On this um, on the takes on Bloomberg here, 216,000 is the number. The unemployment rate holds steady at 3.7%, but remember... That's because of participation. 845,000 people left the, the workforce in December. 845,000. Now, I, you know, you have holidays in there, right? You have Christmas. You have a lot of volatility and variance that may come into December numbers. We saw revisions of October and November to the downside. Keep that in mind as we march forward. Yeah, they talk about black unemployment. Uh, the number of black men who are employed increased 173,000, the biggest jump in more than a year. That's in a month where there was a giant decline in the overall employment figures. Okay, that seems remarkable. There's a lot of volatility here. Hispanic unemployment jumps to 5% from 46 Okay, you got low response rates here. I mean, everything here is just, um, there's a lot for everybody to hold on to in terms of, Wherever you are in your opinions of, this, opinions of this market, there's almost something for everybody. It seems like that's been the case as we go forward over and over. As in, even in moments where there is good economic data, good fronts for inflation, right? Maybe a soft landing. I saw the words Goldilocks scenario in this one. Well, you could say a Goldilocks scenario would have been a huge beat in the jobs, but ease up on that wage data man okay pay attention to that wage data it's still a remarkable number at four percent they got to get it back down to two percent and what have we seen we've seen that they are stuck with wage numbers at 4.1 we were at four percent last month we're at 4.1 we're back to where we were in october those numbers were only at something like 4.3 or 4.4 percent early in this year at some point so we've struggled to make the gains on wages and that is transferring over to some of the numbers when you talk about the probability of cuts. But guess what? Some of that's getting erased as we speak, as the market's only down by one, 47.28 right now. Let's jump around to some of the equities as we wait for that opening bell. Amazon shares, been a tough week for them, among many other of the Magnificent Seven. Amazon shares slightly in the positive by 30 pennies today. Apple, they've been taking it on the chin, man. Apple down about 50 pennies at 181. They were at 194 a week ago. That's remarkable. Microsoft shares this morning going to be up by a dollar. They catch a little bit of a bid pre-market, 369.30.
from 367.94 as of yesterday. You jump over to Tesla shares, 236.90. Tesla going to open the day down as well. You jump over to NVIDIA shares. Yeah, that was quite a trade on Tuesday to kick off the year for NVIDIA, but they've held up pretty well this week. Some of the other equities have continued their slide. NVIDIA, basically back you to where you were Tuesday morning, right? A lot of equities wish they were trading where you were on Tuesday morning right now when you look at especially these FANG stocks. Google shares, you're going to be basically flat on the open as well. We jump over to the dollar index as we digest some of that economic data. Actually lower now. We got a 103 handle, and boom. Remember, the first move is not always the move. It's going to be pretty remarkable if the market interprets this data, right, with a hot wage number. And we finish the day with lower yields. It's happened before, folks. Stay tuned. We're coming back for the opening bell. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kickstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Uh, we open the market. We got the S&Ps up by one point right now. NASDAQ 100, we're up by eight points right now. Pretty remarkable. We come into that 830 economic dump number at 4720, and we're 10 points higher in the S&P. I mean, man, this is always the remarkable part, right? You'd say, boy, if you bet on higher wages, and let's say you were bearish the market because – if higher wages mean inflation is persistent, that means the market may have gotten ahead of itself a bit with where interest rate cuts are coming down the line. They're probably done hiking, okay, my opinions. And whenever you hear a Fed official say anything's on the table, of course anything's on the table. I'm always surprised that even reaches the, the press. Of course anything is on the table. But barring a surprise, right, barring a pretty dramatic surprise in terms of a radical shift in inflation back to an area of 5% or something like that, barring something like that, no, hikes are not on the table anymore, would be my consensus opinion, okay? Now, when you go forward, though, what about cuts? Well, the market probably got a little bit of ahead of itself when talking about how many cuts are coming down the line. Well, what does that mean? Where equities are priced right now, is predicated on lower yields, okay? So if you're predicated on lower yields, what happens if the market has to revert to a higher yield going forward because there's not as many cuts that we may have expected when the market got a little bit ahead of itself as the Fed pivoted to signal the end of their hiking, okay? And that's where you could see some of this play out. But I, with all that said, it was a hot wage number. We're seeing yields jump around, and you actually have the market positive this morning. Now, you could make the case that we are 110 points off of the highs that we were trading at basically a week ago, which is remarkable when you put it in that context, right? Last Friday, December 29th, you were at 48.41. You just gave up 110 points. You gave up more than 2% on the week. So a little bit of negativity priced in, at least off those highs. And you did give back all the way to December 13th, that number in the S&Ps where you began that day, 4,700. But nonetheless, markets pick up higher. Let's see where we are in yields to begin things. You got the 10-year. It's continuing to climb in price. It's going to be remarkable, man, if somehow the market takes a hot wage number and runs with it to a period of what? To a period of higher price and lower yield. And that would indicate higher price in the markets. Dow off 15 right now. Russell's still off by 11. Let's check in on some of those FANG stocks. Amazon catches a small bid off the low of 143.39. We're at 144.70, up by 10 pennies. Apple sees a positive day after a tough week. You're up 43 pennies. That's a quarter percent at 182.31. Microsoft shares right now up a third of a percent. NVIDIA shares, there's a bid for you, up by 1.1%. Meta shares are flat this morning at 346. <clears throat> All right, what else we got pulled up here? Yeah, interesting one out here from the journal this morning talking about Netflix. Video games. Netflix considers ways to make money from video games in a possible pivot. They're looking for more revenue, man. For the longest time, they never would have touched ads. Remember Reed Hastings talking about ads in the early days? That that wasn't their plan, man. Their plan was subscriptions, right? Because people love binge and people don't like ads. Well, that all changed. Uh, video games are an area that I think Netflix would love to get into. That's putting it lightly. That's stating the obvious. You just saw Microsoft, right, with their purchase – was it 69 billion that they paid? It is very difficult to create a gaming company because hits can be so hard to come by. When you're producing movies, not even not as much, not as difficult. Okay, and that's why there's the potential there um, that maybe they go after somebody. I've thought about this before. You know, if they really want to be a player in video games, they're probably going to have to make a purchase. Okay. And that's that's the bottom line if you want to be a real player. Now, they can do things in a different course. You know, maybe they don't try and compete with the biggest makers out there. They try and add some type of revenue on a lower tier gaming system or something like that. Um, but this article even talks about that they encourage open debate. And um, 
such discussions don't mean the company will decide to monetize games. So they're not quite sure yet, but I think they want to monetize games, folks. They're not getting into it unless they wanted to monetize it, right? They've bought a handful of small gaming studios over the past few years, started to create more games focused on its own shows and movies, okay? Um, yeah, some of their love shows, they try and play it into it. They licensed some of the popular games like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, which drove 11% of Netflix's game downloads. Yeah, they spent about a billion dollars on buying gaming studios and building the business. The company spends about $17 billion a year on shows and movies, so obviously. I'd be very skeptical of this one unless they make a purchase, though. That's where I have, as a investor... Yeah, Netflix games were downloaded 81.2 million times globally last year. Threefold increase from 28.7 million downloads it had in 2022. Um, both of these numbers, you could argue, are irrelevant, though, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, a total of a fraction of the hundreds of millions of downloads for games such as Roblox, Activision, which Microsoft just purchased, and, uh, you know, Candy Crush, all that stuff, right? For what it's worth, we jump over to Netflix shares. Now, the other side of that is, right, <clears throat> there is potential. And you look at a company like Roblox. Now, at one point, when this thing peaked out at 141 and, and the world was a little bit euphoric, <laughs> more so than it probably should have been, this was the most expensive gaming company in the world. And Activision Blizzard, yeah, was at 97 at that point, okay, Activision Blizzard trades down to 55. News about Microsoft probably comes out when you get that gap from 64 to 85, right? You chop around forever until that deal gets done, and now you're trading at 94, basically back to where you were near the highs. That's Activision, okay? Look where you were in 2021, June, even earlier in the year, right? This is, is that one there? Yeah. So their highs were made early 2021. You almost made that same high, though, in June of 2021. You jump over to Roblox. They made that high in November. They were up at a price of 95, maybe 103. You spiked to 141. The point being, you see where Activision is, you see where Roblox is. Nowhere near where these higher levels were when some of these growth companies got way ahead of itself. The one thing I will say, folks, um, we got a six-year-old who uh, is in the house. He loves playing Roblox, man. He got me playing Roblox with him, and it was actually pretty cool. Um, I could see the attraction to some of those games and yeah it's quite a pullback but you're still talking about quite a company man roblox and one of the things you look at you know maybe netflix comes in with something like that 26.5 billion dollars is the market cap for a company like roblox netflix spends 17 billion dollars a year on content for the movies not outlandish to talk about an acquisition s and p's up on just back. launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Oh, jeez. Attempt to reconnect. What's it doing? Apologies, folks. My connection having a few problems right now. I'm going to talk up a little bit about Disney. So NCAA and ESPN, they ache an eight-year deal, $920 million in media rights deal. It almost feels like no matter what you got to pay, man, it's worth it to get that deal done. Just give me one second here, folks, as I get back in here. I might have to jump my camera off for a second, folks. Uh in terms of just my, my chart to my producer. But, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit of sports. So you have – oh, hold on one second for me. Apologies, folks. Just getting my screen going. There we go. One second. Okay, we're back. So you have the S&Ps up by eight points right now. We jump over to Disney shares. Disney, been a tough run for them, man. We're trading at 90.93 for Disney right now. You're up by four tenths percent, pretty much just in line with the market. But interesting when you look at this rights deal. Now, there's only one NCAA, okay? And I think in the business ESPN, it's got to be remarkable going into those types of negotiation where the NCAA knows that ESPN can't lose out on this deal, right? So how much can you push up the price of these knowing that there's no way that ESPN can say, well, you've, you know, the price really isn't worth it, so we're not going to air any sports anymore. They have to air sports. That's all they do. So they have to be the ones that are paying it. They can probably make the most off of those contracts is what's built into that assumption to a certain degree. But, boy, they got a lot of competition, so they get it done through 2032. You're talking about, uh, yeah, basically an eight-year deal. Triple the value of the current deal. So they're talking about a value, 115 million bucks a year. Now, Netflix spends $17 billion on content a year. Seems like that's not that bad when you put it in that context, when it gets you a tremendous amount of these championships. Now, what I will say is, how many of the women's and men's championships okay this deal starts september 1st it runs through 2032 40 ncaa championships and a lot of these are awesome man i love great competition right you pull up a good sport at the end of the season no matter what sport it is you're talking about um gymnastics softball baseball volleyball badminton whatever it is if you're at the highest level i mean just it's the best reality show out there that's why people love sports man the emotions that are built in you look at something like the super bowl Right, You look at something like one of the playoff games that was going on this week right, with uh, the likes of Michigan, the Michigan-Alabama game. How about that game? Right, If you were watching that game, tremendous finish to the Michigan-Alabama game. Goes into overtime. Michigan scores. Alabama has the ball. They're going down. They got a fourth down. They got to get in. 
And um, the game ends and that's it. And those players had worked basically the entire year, right? From when the entire year ended the previous year, they went 365 days with one goal to be the champion. And, you know, watching that play out in live with those types of emotions. So they got 40 championships. But I wonder how much some of these actually drive viewership, ad revenue, et cetera. When you are talking about something like... Um, you know, even the WNBA struggles, right? Let alone women's basketball. I know the Final Four in women's does some big names for sure. Yeah, but of course the NCAA president, good old Charlie Baker from Massachusetts, uh, having one multi-platform home to showcase our championships provides additional growth potential along with greater experience for the viewer and our student-athletes. And that's where ESPN has their advantage in the negotiation, right? They say, listen, what are you going to do, man? You're going to sell some championships to Prime. You're going to sell some to Max, some to um, Netflix. No, you want to keep them on the sports leader, ESPN, and we'll see how ESPN uses them um, as well. So 57% of the value of the deal is tied to women's college basketball specifically. That's remarkable when you put it in that context. The dramatic increase in the value of the NCAA media rights will allow it to explore revenue distribution units for the women's basketball tournament. If that's where the revenue is coming from, man. You know, everyone wants the equal pay deal, folks. And I think if you look at it in the context of the revenue created, that creates a much easier scenario for those types of debates, conversations, etc., uh, but nonetheless, you're talking about almost a billion-dollar deal. And ESPN unchanged on that number. Disney, I should say, but not the market, man. Check it out. We are running higher. You get the NASDAQ 100. We're up by a quarter percent. Let's see how some of the FANG stocks are trading. Apple shares up by a tenth of a percent. Microsoft, six-tenths percent in the positive. Google, you're up by four-tenths percent. Yeah, NVIDIA up 1.3% right now. Meta shares up by a full percent as well. We jump over to yields. Basically unchanged on that number, which is remarkable. I mean, we are up a bit in terms of yields, right? We're, we're pushing about 4, 4.05%. Let's see where we are right now. 4.04, we'll call it, the yield on the 10-year. We got above 4.08. We almost got to 4.10, 4.1, I should say, percent on the 10-year. We look at the dollar index. It moved accordingly with the yields. We saw the dollar index spike to 103. That's continued to weaken. Remarkably enough, I mean, if you just looked at this data, it would say that the market is not blinking when it comes to a March cut. Pretty remarkable when you look at the fact that we have hotter wages than we were expecting. The other story out there. The Red Sea, it's continuing, right? What do we have? We have crude trading to a little bit higher price this morning. Let's pull up crude. We're trading up a buck fifty to seventy three sixty nine. We were almost pushing seventy four dollars. We were just recently at a sixty nine handle. Let's put that back on a fifteen. Yeah, on Wednesday, sixty nine. Just talking to our man Teddy Kegstat on Wednesday, talking to Kevin Hinks on Thursday. We had a great call from our man Mike in Somerville uh yesterday. Not sure you're going to get quite a bit on this, even with these types of headlines persisting at $73. Now you have the shipping giant, Maersk. They're going to divert vessels away from the Red Sea for the foreseeable future. That's the Danish shipping giant. They said today that it's going to extend its diversion for the foreseeable future. Uh, that means, as we keep saying, avoiding the quickest path between Europe and Asia through Egypt's Suez Canal and taking the longer Cape of Good Hope route around South Africa. And you got several firms out there, um, several European firms. IKEA. Next, Electrolux have warned of delays on some products due to supply chain disruption. Does that sound familiar? Supply chain disruption, folks. Um, yeah, you're talking about you know you want some IKEA, you want some Electrolux, you want some appliances. Uh, nonetheless, they are going to be on these ships, man. They are going to be on these ships, and it is not stopping right now. And how do you stop that, right? I mean, this is small groups of rebels. You know, this is um, a very difficult thing to overcome when you look at the disruption that so few can cause on a shipping canal like that that is so tiny. I mean, look at that Suez Canal, right? The Red Sea, the Suez Canal. Whew. Pretty remarkable how the oceans, you know, you always learn about history 
<clears throat> the oceans controlled everything, right? Shipping routes, ports, etc. Not a lot has changed. The, the shipping routes are still very important. They're still controlled by a very select few areas that many ships have to go to. And the percentage of goods that go through this route is astounding. Yeah. All right, folks, one more segment. We got markets in positive territory on Jobs Friday. Stay tuned. We'll look at some other equities moving today. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets continuing to trade higher. You got the S&Ps, 4740. We're up by 10 points. And remember, it's been quite a pullback this week, okay? So we have a pullback. We're still 100 points off where you were trading at last week. You're talking about a 2% pullback. So, yes, we have a little bit of weakness in the number this morning in terms of weakness as in hot wage numbers. That could potentially put a little bit of weakness in the narrative that you get the cuts coming down the line that the market's pricing in. But nonetheless, we go forward. We got a Fed meeting June, January 31st, right? The last Wednesday, the last day of January, a Wednesday, January 31st. That's the next Fed meeting. The one after that is March 20th. The odds of a cut were 80-something percent a week ago. They were 60-something percent yesterday. They got down to 50-something percent, but that number, we might be back up um, as this market has reverberated, to say the least. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you jump back to that 10-year. Again, quite a little pullback already, 
All right, you look at today's day, you did spike to a low of 111.06. We're back to 111.21, but still well off the 113.09 number. We're sitting above 4% yield on the 10 year right now, but the SP is up by nine points. Pretty remarkable, man. We jump over to Tesla. They're recalling 1.6 million cars in China over problems with autopilot and locks. I don't believe it. The autopilot? Full self-driving? Um, I wonder how those conversations go with re re recalling, recalling cars in China, right? 1.6 million vehicles, state regulators announced on Friday. Um, they can be fixed through a free over-the-air software update, so drivers do not have to take their vehicles anywhere, though is the deal. That's how a recall works these days, right? Pretty remarkable how that's the case. Tesla positive with the market today, up by about eight points. And we finish it up with the dollar index. You got to listen to yields in the dollar, man. Because if yields were spiking higher, the dollar would be spiking higher. And that's just not happening, man. This market is not buying it. They're trying to push the theme of lower yields coming at you. And we will find out. Um, yeah, as you got a Fed meeting at the end of this month. Don't expect anything at the end of this month. But boy, where are we going to go in the market potentially getting ahead of the Fed? And it's not stopping, even with some hot wage data from this morning. Folks, stay tuned. Basil Chapman's up next. Steve Rhodes, Larry Pesavento, Tom O'Brien, my dad. He's